five wishes. Please come on in, take a seat, and we are just starting with the session, so your perfect timing. And uh, yesterday we, we asked you to make five wishes for Mahara. Five things that you would like to see improved, five things that um, you've all you died to have and you really can't live without. And um, we, we said we'll give you five things, it's because one wish is oftentimes kind of the standard, three wishes hmm, may not really be enough for the things that you would like, actually like to achieve, and therefore we thought, okay, we'll give you five. And unfortunately, a lot of you actually provided us with a lot of wishes. So altogether, I think it was a, around 120. So in a way, I'm happy that it wasn't 500 because otherwise I would have had to rent a new apartment to spread out all the papers on my, um, on my living room floor so that I can group them. But it was really great to see all the wishes listed there. And um, now what we'll do is we'll just take a look at some of them um, because we, we have some themes and then see, um, kind of make it interactive so that you can also tell us a little bit more about it, what you would really like to see and that we can get a discussion going. But how did we actually arrive at the five big themes that uh, we are going to look at? Well, you put your wishes into the wishing jar yesterday, all nicely written on paper. Thank you very much for writing legibly most of the time. <laughs> what I did afterwards, went home, spread them out, tried to categorize them as best as possible. So this was the first step, just deciphering everything, putting it into places, and then I grouped them. So altogether, we now have about 23 um, individual categories. Um, some of them are overlapping, and um, so here they are more easily readable. We do also have a few things that we actually already implemented. So some of the wishes aren't wishes anymore, but they have already been realized, not overnight, but in kind of a latest Mahara 1.8. And so that is, just shows that some people are, um, use different versions of Mahara and therefore don't always know what has already been implemented in a later version, and therefore some of the wishes we already looked into. And other things are around the look and feel so that Fonts, for example, can be manipulated more easily directly in the platform. Lots of people talked about tagging, linking to other systems, aggregations, browser plugin, assessment, bulk admin options, page on collection organization, flexibility, social features, versioning, being more intuitive, offline access, templates, giving quick feedback, various other things um, that I didn't really find categories for, so sorry about those of you who, landed, who ended up there. Uh, groups, credentialing, collaboration, mobile access, collaboration across sites, and training resources. So some of the items that were kind of, that had a higher volume of um, <coughs> wishes were tagging, and um, that also included kind of social tagging, so tagging people and not just tagging content. Then linking to others, li uh, uh, linking to other systems, aggregating information and content from other systems into Mahara. Assessment, being more intuitive. Quite a lot of people wrote about templates. Mobile access, mobile app, access can, and other things, and also group features. So what we'll be doing now is going to look at some of these categories. Um, I've picked five because we had five wishes, so I thought five categories kind of makes, makes for a nice thing in the next hour or so, and um, take about five minutes, potentially more time for each of these items to kind of go a little bit deeper. I'll give a very brief overview of kind of what was talked about in the category, what was wished for, and Tom will time me so that after five minutes we can kind of see whether there's still more need for, uh, present, uh, for discussions because we definitely still have more time, but that we try to get through everything so that um, a lot of people here in the room will have had their say through the wishes. Before I show you the categories though, just briefly um, what it looks like when you look at it on a computer. Um, I didn't go for a mind map because some things actually belong into several categories. So I went for creating a C map, uh, which is a concept map, and you can see it doesn't really fit onto the screen, so I didn't want to 
put it onto a slide because you wouldn't really have seen anything. But it's very nice to just spread it out and um, I can definitely put that up later on on the website so that you can take a look also where the individual items um, overlap. And for some of these items, I also wrote that I kind of didn't know what was meant when there was just one word or something. Um, set the main portfolio page with specific pages. So if you mention that and you want to let us know more, know more of what it is and we don't get to that today, then please just uh, send me an email so that we can make sure that we also record it properly and actually really know what you want. Not that you want a round thing and we end up with a square thing. Yeah, so that goes through and that's what kind of 120 pieces of square paper look like. But now to the first thing. I think intuitiveness, being more intuitive, is on everybody's um, utmost wish list, uh, way up to the top. And a lot of items in here included reducing the number of steps to get to something. So for example, a common theme was, well, if you want to publish a journal, you first need to go into content, journals, you need to add your entry, then you need to put it into a page, and then you need to publish that to somebody in order to share it. Whereas on other systems, you just create your entry, and then your entry is visible to everyone. So that was one thing the journal functionality is quite tricky to get started with um, in terms of making it uh, now easier for people to have fewer steps so that, for example, also a journal entry or a journal gets published to a page immediately without you needing to put it in, and then also um, get shared directly with the people and make, it e make the sharing easier. In general, also uploading files could become a little bit easier, though it is now already possible that you can put files directly on a page. Uh, but in terms of, um, yeah, just also uploading it from mobile devices and really making sure that everything is in the right place and that you don't have to go through so many steps to actually put things onto your portfolio page in order to make them available to others. Um, if we take a brief look at some of the other things for intuitiveness, then we've got... Um, that Danielle wanted to have thumbnail images of uploaded files in pages so that you don't necessarily just need to look at the file name, but you can see a little preview image and know immediately, ah, yep, yeah, this is my file. Because right now also the very small thumbnail images for, for the images are way too tiny to actually see anything on them. Um, then we've just said place journal on a page from within journal editing screen, provide new users with easy ways to comment tasks. So for example, make it easier to share a journal with a teacher. And then also focus on pages. Create pages and then upload artifacts directly there. Um, make the artifact file picker collapsible so that you don't always see all the files, but kind of only see them when it's necessary. And I think this is in particular the case for Mahara 1.8, where you can now also attach files directly to a text box, but you see all your all your files all the time and so that box becomes quite long. And then we've also had a number of um, sticky uh, number of squares that were the same. So three people said fewer steps to accomplish anything. And so that also shows that this is very important that this is definitely something we need to focus on. And so I'd just like to give it back to you now. Is there anything that you would like to elaborate on, either on the items that we just mentioned or on anything new that just came to mind now that you would really like to see in terms of um, making Mahara more intuitive? Do you already have feedback from students or from teachers or from staff that are using it? Um, just so that we get a better idea of where we are at with intuitiveness and where we should be going to. Erica. I, th I think it's um, quite true about less steps. Um, having been at two colleges now um, and trying to get it implemented, um, and both colleges are looking for something like Google Docs or Ultranet, um, but but they're only doing that because um, they, they see it as more complicated to get anything done in my portfolio. So if it, my, my principals just asked me to ask, 
if there's any way in which we can make it a sort of simpler step through process for teachers, especially thinking in secondary schools. Um, I can see why tertiary has taken it on much more than secondary schools, um, but that I think if it was less steps, I think it would be more likely to be embraced by a wider number of teachers. And also if you have ideas of how to make it different or how you've already adopted the system to make it more intuitive for you but just haven't shared it with the entire community, we'd also like to hear about that. Julian. Uh, we had uh, some feedback from students who are probably thinking in uh, sort of a mobile app frame of mind with the dashboard, if the, uh, this is in the My Schools portfolio. If the dashboard could be um, expanded to have just buttons that link direct to, so you just had a journal button that would take you straight into your journal, um, you know, and that straight from the dashboard would just have one click to go to each feature that you might want. Do you not have the, the dashboard image anymore? You still have the dashboard image, but it could be expanded to have. Make, make it kind of visually more yeah, appealing than just clicking on a link? It just takes you straight to your journal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, I'm not taking notes, but um, Aaron is, for sure. David. The intuitive uh, concept is, is really important, but we, we, we have a lot of difficulty because we have uh, English as second language speakers primarily in mm -hmm. And so we, we said, okay, let's, let's assume that the system isn't going to be intuitive and that almost all of these people are involved in distance learning, how do we get a creative solution for that? And we thought the answer was to actually create badges for learning how to use the system mm -hmm. and making our tutors go to where they were located to, to teach it that way. Now, uh, we've been using Mahara three years of struggle with the fact that our students have this uh, initial difficulty to overcome. But uh, Greg and Nicola, myself and now, we we'll probably talk about five or six of these open badges and, and staged it. So you get a, a stage one badge for learning Myrtle and Mahara mm -hmm. basic functions and intermediate badge for uh, more advanced functions in Mahara. And then finally, the an advanced badge, and that's where I take, take a little bit of different tactic. I actually think Google Drive is more complex to learn than Mahara. So our third badge looks at how do you use LinkedIn, Google Drive, uh, which are the specific things that we're interested in. How do you integrate those um, uh, with uh, Mahara? But I can't tell you any results for that advanced badge because no one's done <laughs> but how do the students uh, and teacher, uh, yes, yeah, students go on um, with the tutorials that you give them and the badges? Do they help them get started with Mahara? Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. The fact Good. that you earn a badge is a great incentive for an adult. Learning. I think that's very good to hear for Scott, who gave a presentation on badges yesterday and how they might be able to be implemented in Mahara. Um, currently, just in case you have not really heard too much about badges yet, if you are a Moodle user, you can easily issue badges to your students. And then uh, there is a plugin currently for Mahara that allows them to display these badges, but they need to go via the Mozilla backpack first. So you have your Moodle, export your badges into the Mozilla backpack, and then you can make them uh, visible in Mahara. And we've also explained that in the user manual, there's uh, currently only a plugin, but hopefully once uh, Mozilla opens up its APIs and allows others to be backpacks as well, then we can look into the, um, into the development work for making Mahara a backpack so that Mahara becomes the store for all badges. Because essentially Mahara can still be a, a personal learning environment where you keep everything lifelong and then it would make a lot of sense to just take your badges from Moodle and make them directly visible in Mahara without having to go through a second step. And yes, if you want to know more about badges, I'd encourage you to check out Scott's presentation or just search for open badges 
online. And just as a side note, you will all be getting at least one badge too. So after the conference, you're, if you haven't earned a badge yet, you will certainly have done so in a few days and can start exploring that functionality as well and seeing whether that could be something motivating for you, your students, your teachers, and your staff. Richard. Yeah, Christina, just in case people don't know, there's a new organization which had its first meeting about a week ago, I think, on a Google Hangout, which is uh, Open Badges Australia New Zealand. So Joyce Satsing and some other people put that together. Mm -hmm. uh, and their Twitter handle is at OB underscore ANZ. So I might tweet that. So That would be great if you tweeted that. They're actually discussing strategies for using open badges across Australia and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. It's take, really taken off in the UK um, and some other pits around the world. Yeah. So they're trying to establish this baseline for Australia and New Zealand specifically. Yeah. It might be interesting. Thank you very much, Richard. And the support of Mozilla as well. Yes. And the nice thing is, uh, just as a brief example, last year there was the um, Summer of Learning in Chicago, and um, a lot of organizations were involved, and thousands of students, and they earned all badges throughout the summer um, to show off their skills and competencies and then have some credentialing on it. Shane. So, so the question was for, for the right side of the room, in case you haven't heard it. Um, is there just one badge, or do badges also get connected up? Uh, ultimately, those badges will get connected up and enable students to successfully complete it to enroll in an NDQA course or ministry and online content. They have to earn a sequential set of badges. And so that, uh, Shane, is definitely an area that we will need to look at critically, um, whether we mesh it up more, whether we make it, you put more buttons somewhere so that you can go more quickly from one to the other or allow you to directly from a page to create content, more content than is already possible at the moment so that it becomes easier to use, more intuitive in that regard so that you don't have that big learning curve that was also mentioned on some cards. Yeah. But the idea with um, having a tutorial and issuing badges can be a nice interim solution until we kind of improve matter in the ways uh, that uh, you suggest and that other people also want to go. And therefore, thank you very much for, for sharing, David. Any other comments, ideas around intuitiveness? No? Okay, then let's, let's look at a second big topic. And that's also been not coming out in PLE towards assessment or PLE versus assessment, but um, it is un, in, in the cards I find underlyingly there, and it is also a topic that has come up more and more in the wider Mahara community. Uh, because in the beginning, Mahara used to be more of a personal learning environment. The focus is on the user. The user decides what they want to put in there, with whom they want to share it, how they want to participate, whether they want to collaborate, and how they really want to build their portfolio. But now that Maharaj has found wider application and um, use in um, schools, universities, and also associations and used for cred credentialing, accreditation in particular, a lot of these assessment features kind of seem to be seeping through and being in demand 
Um, if you really want to know what some people are already doing in that regard, I encourage you to go to Louise's and presentations right after this one in here, and then later on Misty's and Shane's and um, Angus, because there you'll get an idea of how people are using Mahara already for assessment, even though we actually don't really have a lot of assessment features in there, except for submitting a portfolio. And so I'd really like to get a sense from you where you see Mahara, whether you, you are more on the PLE end of things, so that you say, I want a lifelong portfolio for all my learners, and um, I give them the freedom to do anything, or whether you are on the assessment side of things, and say, I want to use it very much in conjunction with my learning management system, I want to be able to give grades, I want to be able to use rubrics, I want to really do my assessment and also have the requisite reports in there so that I as teacher can actually look at what it is. Or whether you're somewhere in the middle of this continuum from PLE to assessment. And where, do, where would you like to see the future of Mahara? Are you saying, yes, we definitely need to have more assessment features or it should be a choice or what are your ideas on that? Uh, Jeremy. If you go too far down the pure assessment thing, then you lose the point of difference. Mm -hmm. um, and the point of difference being it's always about the, the learner being in control. So there needs to be some sort of maybe an opt in or you know, the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. So the, ideally, the best of both worlds? Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Erica? On the other side, though, um, when I've met sort of colleagues, um, they want to do Moodle because Mo in Moodle you can set uh, questions, you can set tasks for students to do. Um, and as very busy teachers, um, if you can get a piece of software that will actually do a lot of the work for you and will give you all the grades and the statistics and everything, um, then that that is a good point because. If we're looking at the wider aspect of it, are we having my portfolio in this respect? Then we're having Moodle in terms of an assessment piece of software. Then we're doing Google because then we can put out Google Forms and do surveys. Or do we want something that is a central um, piece of software that can do all those things? And in this respect, I think we want something that can do everything. Do everything? Yep. Shane? Um, I, I, well, I'm teaching. I don't think we're going to do software. Okay. So, I mean, we're using Google and Mahara together, and we're going to generate the assessment framework and things like that, and it works really well as a sort of binary system. Mm -hmm. So, for University of Canberra, the kind of, uh, the integration of Moodle with um, of Mahara with Moodle works really well because then in Moodle you, you have all the assessment things and in Mahara you have um, y you work more freely. Who is actually using Mahara for assessment purposes? Quite a number. Yeah. Yeah. Alison. So I see the I see the grades belonging in Moodle because that's mm -hmm. that's the class that's yep. the classroom that's where the grades belong. So while it can be it's the same, you know, I don't know why it would be a Google collaborative Google site or a Mahara portfolio or anything. But I I see personally the grades belonging with the mm -hmm. with the student in the LMS. And that's where Mahara that's the Item that represents what happens outside. So, you 
Yeah, that's where we were coming from, especially in the beginning. Uh, that we say the learning management system is the teacher space and the teacher dic dictates that and decides of what students need to hand in in terms of assignments and so on. And then Mahara is more, is, is the freer space where the students have control, where they have breathing room to do what they would like to do. And um, therefore, because a lot of people are using Moodle and Mahara together, there was not always that huge demand for having assessment features in Mahara because you can connect it to Moodle. But of course, as Alison said, that also demands that the integration gets better, that we expand on it and um, allow more content items to be pushed from Moodle to Mahara and then also potentially the other way around. And then the, other, um, the only question for me here for this round then is, who is actually using Moodle in conjunction with Mahara? Yeah, that's not quite half, but it's still quite a few. But that also shows that we cannot solely rely on Moodle um, for doing assessment uh, assessment things if you are not using Moodle, but if you do still need to do uh, need to give formal feedback or might want to see your class um, directly and more closely in what you're doing. He. Yeah, well, institutions using Moodle, they often come the um, sole provider of education for them mm -hmm. whereas often they're not. And that's why it needs to sit outside the institution or their PLE because there might be other academic uh, influences that the student wants to um, mm -hmm. take hold of. So yeah. wherever the learning is, the student needs the option to be able to export and save their stuff. And as you nicely said, learning does not just take place in, in academia, but um, it also takes place form, uh, non-formally and informally. And so that's where, where the por portfolio can come in quite nicely, that you can actually have multiple portfolios or also bring some informal aspects into a more formal um, e-portfolio that you're doing for a class. Mm -hmm. um, just a second, please. Uh, Christine was first. Okay, so that besides the regular sharing, we actually have a more pronounced sharing for assessment feature. Right now, this is just submitting it to a group, which is extremely basic. Um, but kind of look more into these things of how we can make it clear that things are now shared for assessment. Mm -hmm. Shin. Right, um, from, from my experience, helping out um, lectures in New Zealand, um, Mahara as well as our learning management system, um, to me, uh, Mahara is more of a work in progress, so mm -hmm. students do their work and um, make make it towards the perfection to, to the level that they, they, they think is perfect and uh, try to complete the process. And uh, for the learning management system where the assessment happens, it's that's the final product that you want and you submit it to the lecture. And even I know lectures using the learning management system without Mahara, Mahara they, they ask the student to do things and uh, like say, say in Moodle, they, say, they provide a space for the student to, to work in progress and then finally they get the student to export say a PDF file or some final format to submit into a different place mm -hmm. where assessment edit has happened. So to me I think it's, if Mahara could say um, have some feature can uh, say export pages into a PDF file. That could mm -hmm. be something quite nice. Okay, so being able to export export a portfolio more easily so that it could become a product that a university can then also store and also keep for assessment because sometimes these things need to be kept for several years. And that is already something that we looked into but have not yet worked on uh, because it is very important that you keep assessment data in case a student does come back. Um, but really also, and, and Shen said in case you, uh, it was a bit too quiet for, for the other end of the room, is that um, 
the learning management system is often about product because you assess a product, whereas the e-portfolio is more seen as a process where you, where you kind of show your status of development and where you can also see a process instead of just having a product at the end. And that's where the difference comes in. Um, Alison, then Eric and Ching. Um, Blackboard, Black, um, Shen and Lisa, and Blackboard is also being used in, in some American universities. And then um, I just recently heard from somebody who might be using Canvas in conjunction with Mahara, but the only really a real integration that we have at the moment is with Moodle. Um, but I do know that, and um, Lisa and Chen will be presenting on that later on today, as they have some integration points with Blackboard and, and also their, um, yeah, their kind of student management side of things so that uh, users can be created automatically and, and groups as well. And so if you want to hear more about that, I'm not going to elaborate it so that I don't steal your thunder. Um, Erica. Um, just uh, on, on the whole integration thing. Um, in, in secondary schools, it's quite different than tertiary education because um, we have less time to do a, a lot of administrative work. We can teach up to 180, 200 students a year. Um, and um, for a lot of people, to me, it's not an issue if I've got an LMS and I've, I've got Google Docs and I've got Mahara. But for a lot of teachers, um, they want a one-stop shop. They don't want to go, oh yeah, I've got my marking in Moodle and I've got my students' portfolio in Mahara. And they don't want that. They want something that is there for them and it's, it's easily accessible. They want something that's more simplified if it's Mahara because many of them are not technology. It's not the students who've got the problem with the technology. It's not the teachers that have got a problem with the technology. And unfortunately, uh, inside schools, the people who have the power are not the students, it's the teachers. So if the teachers give the students something to do, as um, Alan was saying the other day, they've got to have some reason for doing it. Um, and therefore, for me, if you had some sort of add-on, I don't know, you know, something that you could, I could go to somebody and say, it's simplified, it's easy, we can do this, we could get an add-on which will give us our, our exams in it, and it's much more of a, a, a full product for a secondary education, because that is, you know, we're talking about different markets here, and that's what we're not going to hear. What, what? And it's like using Mahara to have the grading for the portfolio, as well as grades for other things as well. That's what some do, yeah, That's what some do, yeah. Um, what, we, uh, what, what can definitely be achieved is because it's not possible to put all the features that, that all the different systems can bring into one, as, as Shane already mentioned earlier, uh, because they, they are quite specialized. And so what, can the, uh, what we can try to achieve is kind of make it more seamless. So for example, do more with single sign-on, do more with a corporate idea, uh, corporate design across Moodle, Mahara and all the other sites that are being used. So that yes, the interface of from going from one system to the other is slightly different, but it's not such a big thing like, oh yes, I'm in something totally different now. And so that's, that's some things that we could look into. Um, Shane, last no, comment for that. Um, we have not yet talked to the Moodle developers directly for Mnet or Mnet going away and things like that, but we are definitely planning on doing so more intensely over the next few months um, so that we can get further along in that area and then also know what will be happening in terms of authentication. It's just a bit of coordination between Wellington and Perth. And Perth is always slightly behind us. So kind of find, finding a mutual time. Uh, for and, and also finding times between the busy schedules of uh, both sites is, uh, can, can, can prove quite tricky even though we do have the internet and modern communication technologies. Uh, but we are definitely uh, wanting to do that over the next few months so that we have a better idea of what we can do. But in terms of um, 
roadmap alignment and so on, there's nothing like that happening because the model, our model is a standalone product and Mahra is also a standalone product there. Okay, so um, just to briefly summarize of what I've seen is that kind of both sides of the spectrum are still needed um, and also something in between and that we need to find the balance between PLE and assessment and then see how we can make assessment possible without making Mahara an assessment a purely as pure assessment portfolio and without replicating all the LMS functionality because that's why we've got the integration points. Oh, let's go to that one first. Two other systems, links and aggregations. Links to other systems and a lot of times LinkedIn was mentioned of course like we've already seen yesterday uh, but also um, yet yeah, just aggregating content from other sites within Mahara. So it is actually a two-way conversation. It is using Mahara going out to other systems, so for example, tweeting it or putting Facebook updates on it or just saying something that is then being pushed to LinkedIn, but at the same time also integrating content from other sites into Mahara. So yesterday, um, I think it was mentioned on one of the papers and not in the discussion, just getting um, your LinkedIn profile to show up in Mahara and or you reuse the same data. There are already a number of plugins available in particular for Twitter, Facebook and showing your LinkedIn profile in Mahara. But of course that is just the, the beginning. The APIs are much more powerful so that more and more could be achieved. Um, some of the aggregation things are already possible right now in terms of um, using iframes. So if you have YouTube or a lot of other things, yesterday there was um, uh, Tag Nexo mentioned. And if you have an iframe on a site, please ask your Mahara site administrator to put it in so that you can start using it. Um, because as long as we have an iframe, we can make it um, available to everyone so that you can aggregate content from other sites within Mahara. Only because there's only a standard six or seven given doesn't mean that this list cannot be longer. And for my portfolio, for example, we have a much, much longer list so that people can embed um, mind maps, TED Talks, um, other interesting social networking sites and social media sites. And on the wiki, we are also keeping a list so that it's easy for you to see what others are using and might get inspired to also make those available for you. Um, any other comments on linking to other system, aggregating content, what would the ideal scenario for you look like? Seems like we've covered that. Oh. So, so one of the things there we're moving to do moderation mm -hmm. is also that linking to NZQA. So that, you know, I don't know, to, I mean, it's easy enough to send a, a separate or to that anyway. But maybe there's another way that NZQA can actually mm -hmm. be linked in here as well. Yeah, that is a very good comment. And that came up er, um, not, not so far, but um, earlier in discussions, um, is linking to other systems so that data can be pushed. For example, NZQA or also linking to a student management system um, in the terms of not necessarily manipulating content in Mahara, but just seeing content that is in the student management system in Mahara so that students, for example, see their grades uh, or see reports um, that are kept in the SMS or have other ways of connecting so that they have, again, everything in one spot um, aggregated. And then, of course, one, one person also said, um, yeah, linking to NCQA or pushing, sending content a file directly to NCQA instead of um, then putting it into a page or making that page available to somebody from NCQA and then giving it through to them that way. So these are definitely possibilities because Mahara does have um, APIs and we also have a web services plugin so that the, um, the integration with other systems can be achieved. And um, that's, that's where I find see the future of a lot of other applications as well, actually, is that instead of trying to build everything in one system, so add, um, add certain functionality into Mahara that are already really well um, established in other systems, we, we should be linking to these more where possible um, so that we can harness the more powerful functionalities um, in those systems. Sorry that you're seeming to be missing some letters they are on my computer. It's just that the screen um, decided to go a little bit too wide for, um, for display on the, 
on the big screen. Okay, linking aggregation. That is definitely something that is always in development because we know that people do not just use Mahara, but kind of aggregate from a lot of other systems. Now going slightly back, um, templating. That was, templates was also one big thing and a lot of people said, please make it easier to copy a page or copy a collection. Because right now that's kind of, kind of two or three steps that shouldn't really be necessary. And uh, therefore, the question now is um, for templates, yes, we, look, we, we should be looking into making copying easier. But is there actually something maybe mo um, more that you would like to have in terms of do you want to have a central space where you keep all your templates? Or do you actually like it that you have control over you being able to create a template directly out of your own account. Or um, a number of people mentioned they'd like to be able to push one template to all group members or to specific users instead of either mass creating as the students and copying it in or stu telling students you need to go over here and copy the page. What are your thoughts on templating in Mahara? Yes, please. Oh, Christina. Yeah. yeah. So, like from the admin screen, be able to just tick mm -hmm. the user screen, tick the user, and then just go give them or, or the group name, give them that yeah. template. <clears throat> So there are two things, can push a template to all group members, but that of course requires that you first created a group, or then somewhere potentially on the sharing screen, take all the students that you would like to send the template out directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alison? That could be a setting because teachers might just really want need to push a template out to students and then they don't want students to not accept it and then not to the portfolio. Um, that is probably more where you have, uh, where you work for, for assessment purposes or for a specific class. Like a lot of times yesterday was mentioned by, by Ellen and also Sue, kind of also the templates that John is using for an, um, NCDA standards and that you're working with where students really need to get the templates. So for those, it would be better to hear you got the template. But um, for others that are freer, that they would need to accept a template first. Mm -hmm. And then of course, and sometimes also the question comes up, well, my template is there, but I'm actually making a change. Can I push that out to users as well? And that's where we have so far been very reluctant because what we see is once a page is in a student's template, then it's theirs. Then we are not, we should not be manipulating the content of the page because we want to, that the student might have already changed things around and so we should not really take ownership of that and to leave the student where the students where they are. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry I Teresa. I spent about half an hour over the drinks last night talking about this and the tension between what's the user's autonomy and my Mahara and that's precious. And having been funding a lot of school requests over many years, it's always a tension between the way schools work and the way that Mahara is designed. But we came up with a couple of ideas. One is that the individual can say yes or no, as you suggested. Another is it could work in a course group where the individuals can't opt out. So they set up that group because of a degree of compulsion or status. And as the individual has to be in the group for their course, well then they have to receive the templates as part of the course. Another was there could be an institution setting that gave some people the ability to do that so that the students and students groups didn't annoy everybody by doing it frivolously. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I 
was persuaded by the force of argument heard yesterday here and at the meeting that in a school setting, and maybe even tertiary, the saving in administrative time and people making mistakes was worth that lack of learning of them, learning how to do it and any autonomy if you've done well. Yeah. Okay. Teresa. Oh, I was just thinking when you were saying um, about the change, you know, there was, there was a, a set template that everybody had to use, and that changed, then you would need to push it out again, maybe as a fresh mm -hmm. page, yeah. to then move stuff over, so, yeah. Yeah, rather than try and, as you say, mm -hmm. change the right. That's true. So, so really leave the pages as they are once they're in a student's portfolio. And if, if there's a change, then they could bring it back in. Because um, now that it is possible that you can copy text boxes, once you have the new template into your, in your portfolio, you could just put that new text box into your already existing page and replace it. Mm -hmm. Colin? One option might be version control on templates, but that would require significant back-end changes. To, so a student yeah. would be notified there was a new version of the template. Choose to update or not. Mm -hmm. and, and then potentially merge it in. Like we did now with the, with the import of a lead to a portfolio, where we also look at what is in the portfolio that already exists and what is in the incoming one, and then do you want to merge it? Do you want to keep the data? Do, do you want to delete it? Mm -hmm. And versioning and, and also um, going back in time of what students did um, if they did something wrong, that was also mentioned at least twice on the papers. And that is uh, definitely something where, where we know that we are lacking on things because, um, for example, when you give feedback on a portfolio and you give it back, release it back to the student, then they can make changes, but your feedback does not match up anymore. And so that can be quite tricky if you do not have versioning and can go back to that state of the day when you gave your feedback in order to see also how have they progressed. And that is where the progression comes in again. Um, if you really want to show a portfolio over time, um, you do want to kind of see how has it developed. And at the moment, you always have a point in time right now status, unless, of course, you make backups or copy pages and then have those kind of store them individually. But then, of course, managing those pages comes again, which was also quite a, quite a big point. Shane. Mm -hmm. That's definitely where the idea of versioning comes from, so either wiki or git, uh, git versioning where, um, where you have the possibility of just really going back to a specific state, restoring that or checking out what it was. Mm -hmm. And we also have mobile. This is the German version of mobile, so we are having some language classes here today as well. Um, mobile was really, really heavily thought after. So make it easier to work on an iPad, make it easier, have an app for Android, iPad, um, iOS, and not to forget Mark Nichols Windows. And um, really uh, actually give us all the power on the mobile device. Don't strip out functionality like we have done um, now through device detection that you can't do certain things on a on a mobile device because in a way they don't really make sense. But now that people do go more mobile and kind of sometimes even use that as their primary um, device, then of course it makes more sense to have all functionality available. Um, and, and also looking at yeah having a mobile app. We do already have two mobile apps, Mahara Droid, much more powerful. So Android users, yay you, you have all the power. Whereas iOS devices, you can pretty much only upload images and videos. So sorry about that. It's not our fault. Um, the next generation of Mahara Droid will also be able to push text to your device, push notifications to your device. You will be able to um, create a journal entry directly on your phone or on your tablet and then push that into Mahara. Um, that version is already on the Mahara Droid website. Uh, it just hasn't been released. It is there in beta, but hopefully over the next few months we'll be able to push it out so that you can use it. And so the question now is, um, do you need a mobile app? What do you need a mobile app for? Or would you be able just to access it in the browser with a theme that is responsive so that it adapts to the screen size and then do all your portfolio work? Shane. So the 
Offline access. Offline access. Again, Maharaj Droid users, you you can do that already now, because um, that was one of the requirements actually for the application by Sol um, Southampton Solent University, because their students are at sea. They are right at the port uh, somewhere in southern England, and so they don't have internet all the time, or it's horrendously expensive going via satellite, And but they still need to do their portfolio work, so they save everything in Mahara Droid while they're at sea, and once they reach land, immediately they turn on Wi-Fi and just push everything into their portfolio. And so that is a possibility there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chi. Richard. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, um, um, is, is that part of Mahara philosophy to focus more on the Android side and less on the iOS side? Because I do get that distinct impression. Why, do you, think, why, do, why do you think that might be? <laughs> because one is a closed system and one is more towards the open source side. Yeah. It's more in tune with your philosophy. And uh, Mahara Droid was, uh, was created as a proof of concept. And there, we already know, of course, that a lot of people are using iOS devices. But at Catalyst, we work with Android because we are an open source company. And Mahara um, Portfolio app, which is the iOS um, site, is um, developed by Bright Cookie over in Adelaide. So if you want to get in touch with somebody over there, please see Alison. She knows who they are. And um, we, we just wanted to see what could a mobile app for Mahara look like. And then it's been taken up in particular by Southampton Solent University, and they said, well, we have more Android users than iOS, so we are catering to those in the beginning. But that does not mean that um, in the future we might not have a phone gap app and kind of cater to more devices or more operating systems. But for the time being, our resources are kind of a bit limited, and that's why we were still looking at Mahara Droid. But here's a potential revenue stream. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody knows what we should be doing, could be doing, and also has pockets <laughs> kind of, <laughs> that could have a little bulge on them, then that might be helpful. He. Say, talking about Mahara Droid, um, pushing content up, which I was showing to the files area, um, it would be good to have um, offline page creation as well, so that we're creating a page can be saved to the device and mm -hmm. the same Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, um, offline access was mentioned as well. I did get the yellow card, so we do need to get to our last point, and that would be collaboration. So I've already mentioned a few times, kind of group people wanted some more group features, uh, kind of in, in pushing out templates, uh, copying pages, but also working for, for assessment, submitting portfolios there. Uh, but what was really, really interesting, and um, we could have expected that a little bit from the, from the keynote discussion and some other discussions afterwards, is that people also want to be able to collaborate more. So not, but not just within one Mahara site, but also across Mahara sites. So link Mahara sites to each other, be able to go into another one. And um, that is definitely a theme that um, has come up a bit more, especially because people are moving around or um, are in an academic setting, but actually are also working at school. And that was one reason why the School of Education from the University of Canterbury is actually on my portfolio.school instead of .ac because they need to work with the teachers. And so needing to be on the platform where the teachers then will actually be interacting with the students is more helpful instead of being on another platform and having also slightly different features there because the versions do not always match. And uh, Mahara does allow you to connect to another Mahara site, but what we would need to be looking into is kind of how to expand that again, how to make that integration between different sites easier and really look into when you have your portfolio on one Mahara site, but you want to interact with people on another Mahara site, is that possible? How can that be possible? Can people look at your portfolio as well? How would you need to share it? Or eventually, maybe 
if somebody has really, really deep pockets, we could have a um, universal Mahara site for everyone that everyone can connect to. And where also privacy issues, that was one thing that Christoph always mentioned on his papers, where privacy still is respected. Because if we have a lot of different users from primary school, sometimes even kindergarten, up to old age, then of course we also know that there are potential points of friction and um, problems that can be more instead of where we, like on my portfolio at school, where we only have students and teachers, but nobody else who could do marketing on it and things like that. So there are a few things that we do need to keep in mind when looking at larger Mahara instances, but it's definitely something that seems to be of interest in terms of collaboration. So any more thoughts on collaboration either within one Mahara site or across Mahara sites? that is not the case, then I'd like to invite you, though, not to leave it at that, because what we will be doing is we, we will be cataloging your wishes if they aren't already on our Mahara wish list, so that we definitely capture them, not just here for the conference and, and in a concept map, but also um, on our wish list tracker, so that we kind of are reminded at intervals what people would like to see. And you are, of course, also invited to share further information, um, further thoughts around any of the things that you put onto your squares uh, yesterday in the community or in the communities where you're at. On myportfolio.school, we do have a discussion group. So anybody is very welcome to give us back reports or wish list items there because we take them back to the wider community. If you do not have um, a community on your Mahara site, please do use the wider one, so mahara.org. Share your ideas with other community members around the world. Participate in user groups. Um, see how you can hook up with others. Let us know what's bugging you, what you really, really like, and what you would like to see in the future, so that we can continue on these discussions. Because we don't just want to make that a one-off exercise and say, okay, thanks for your 120 wishes. Now we are just putting them aside because we, we can't get to them and we are not looking at them. But we do put them into our system so that we um, are aware of them, Aaron took notes, and that we can always keep these things in mind and see how we can um, include some of them in each version of Mahara. But of course, if your pockets are deep, then and you would like to have one or more features more quickly than the development team might be getting to, then you're also very welcome to contact us so that we can get the features quickly for you. Because kind of money rules in that regard as well. Even though Mahara is open source, um, all the developers and me as well do need to eat at some point. And therefore, having somebody who pays for features, and there are a lot of you here in the room who are actually supporting the development of Mahara very actively, um, really, really helps us to bring the software further along. And with every version of Mahara, we do have contributions from the community, either in code or in funding, so that we can give all of you lots more features. And Aaron will be mentioning some of them for Mahara 1.9 later today. Um, Shane, last question. There is just one institution, we have a preschool where we've got a library. Mm -hmm. And the last time, Yes. So the federal separation of institutions in that regard, uh, or at least being able to say that Yeah, that would be needed, and the specifications for that are already available in the, for the isolated institutions. And that is what is holding back even a countrywide implementation of Mahara for everyone, because you do not necessarily want primary school students contacted by somebody working in a company wanting to sell them something. So we do need to be, be aware of privacy things. Um, because it is important that we do protect the students, not kind of protecting in the sense of we want to shut them off of everything and kind of cuddle them, but really just protecting from, yeah, other things. Because on Facebook, they aren't really allowed to be there until they are 13 either. So how should it be that then on Mahara, they can be, they could be contacted by somebody when they are just five or six. And so that is why 
myportfolio.school is separate from .ac so that we have this separation and if we had isolated institutions then that could potentially make a lot of things easier and, and really also allow more people to embrace multiple institution settings there. Well, thank you very much for um, all your thoughts, for really thinking hard about what you would like to have in Mahra. Please continue to let us know. Um, you're not limited to five wishes. Um, use the forum discussions or also Launchpad where our back and wish list tracker is just to put in your thoughts so that the development team and also the commute wider community is aware of them. And then we'll see how much we can get done in releases and maybe you're also contributing. We know that Christoph, for example, is very keen on putting his booklet plugin into Mahara. So that's going to be really exciting. And maybe we are getting to the first step already tomorrow during the Hackfest. So you'll be seeing some really, really nice work coming up over the next few months. And now it's just for me to wish you a nice second day at Mahara Hui. All the best in the presentations. Please discuss with the presenters. Let them know your thoughts, comment on things, and then we will be seeing each other back here all in this room at 4.05 for the conference closing. Have a nice day.